principal GIS consultant in Denver for the firm that bears his name, the Timoney Group. Brian is a supporter of GIS in the Rockies. Frugos, for those of you that do not know, is the front range users of geospatial open source technologies. Oh, woo! And GIS roles. Brian loves to speak publicly and will be talking about life lessons from history's great cartographers. It's a five minute intro. <laughs> But what I'm going to talk to you tonight about is collective amnesia. Our collective amnesia. We're so fixated on the future, the next software release, the next cool website that will change our life. When we all know there has literally been no software, no website that has redefined what it means to be a human being, let alone a cartographer. So tonight, we're going to dip back into the past. We're going to talk about men who suffered, men who triumphed, men married to women, for instance. <laughs> but we need to recognize the past. We have square tiles that form the backbone of our mapping. 600 years ago, our Islamic forefathers knew how to do squares. Our medieval folks confronted with empty space called a terra incognita and created great monsters. Now we build maps and Excel spreadsheets, Blooming Grove, Wisconsin, and we, th we fill empty space with no values. So, so symbolic. So today, I don't want to focus on the professional, I want to focus on the personal, and how these types of people, and what they say to us today. So I'm going to highlight four people. First, Matteo Ricci. Matteo Ricci was a Jesuit priest, in the 1500s who lived in China. Now, he was both an avatar of bringing religion to the Chinese, but also Renaissance science. Matteo Ricci's colleagues in other parts of the world have, were in the habit of getting martyred in very painful ways. Dry and quartered, scalped, uh, just generally beaten on the beaches of Goa, India. Matteo Ricci created a large map of the world with China in the middle. And all the annotation is in Chinese, which he taught himself at 41. But all this was for the emperor, to show respect, but also show what he could do. So, life lesson number one. May, maps make great post gifts. They also make great wedding gifts, if you're not excited about the colander from the gift register. <laughs> so consider giving those you love maps. With reverence, I don't even need to announce his name. We all know who he is. He was the champion of projections for 450 years. Then Peters and Robinson had their half day in the sun, and now it's back. But he understood something we don't. He started out life as Jerry Kremer from Flanders. <laughs> That's in Belgium. But he rebranded himself into Mercator. Now look at us. <laughs> Our industry suffers from the most tedious company names, the most useless acronyms, and yet we have a transformer I need not introduce, Optimus Prime. So what's the takeaway? Brain yourself. Use Latin. It's a dead language, but it makes for really cool brain. <laughs>
he got the Royal Geographic Society Commission to go and survey British Guyana. He did such a good job, he was knighted. But what's the backstory? At 25, his tobacco warehouse in Virginia burns down. He's ruined. He moves to the, to the Caribbean, and his first house, with all his personal effects, burns down. He was a ruined man, took it upon himself to survey an island in the Caribbean that had a lot of shipwrecks, no instrument, no training, but he took it upon himself to self-teach and make great maps. I don't even think he had a GISP certification. <laughs>